Base strength can be examined in much the same way as acid strength. Here we have a generic base, which is just listed as A-, which then connects with water and turns into AH, so it picks up that proton and yields an OH-. And if we are to draw the Kb, the base equilibrium constant for this, that will be represented as AH times OH- minus over A-. Minus. So it's the equilibrium concentration of how much protonated base you have, how much hydroxide ion you have, and then you divide that by the amount of the original base that exists at equilibrium. The general rule is with any K value, if you have a high K value, that means it's good at doing what it does. And so this base will be a good base if it ends up picking up a lot of protons and yielding a lot of hydroxide ions. And that will mean that the equilibrium concentrations of these two species will be very high, whereas equilibrium of that will be very low. And that makes the KB rather high. So a greater KB represents a stronger base, which is something we've also discussed in the special equilibria video. And pKB is calculated like any p value, pKa, pH, etc. It's the negative log of KB, and this is a logarithm in base 10. And whenever you have a p of anything, if that number is low, that means it's a good member of that species. So a low pKb means that it's a very strong base. For general chemistry on the MCAT, there's a list of strong bases that you should be able to recognize as strong bases and assume that they completely dissociate and pick up all of the protons possible. And those strong bases are listed in a lot of different ways, but again, I think it's good to go over a mnemonic. Now, I'll confess, this is probably one of the silliest mnemonics I've ever developed, but I'm going to teach it to you now because one thing I've noticed is that over many years, I've had students come back and say that they still remember the list of strong bases for the MCAT because of this mnemonic. And it's not an easy list to remember otherwise unless you find a way to simplify it. And so what we have here is NaOH, sodium hydroxide. We have Na2O, sodium oxide. We have calcium hydroxide, calcium oxide, any hydride, any species that yields a negatively charged hydrogen, anything that is an amide, anytime you have NH2 minus, and then you also have potassium hydroxide, KOH, which I reorganize as OHK. And so the way to remember this is by remembering a sentence. Now, now, cow, cow, ham, okay. And so what we'll do is we'll go through this. NaOH and Na2O both look like the word now. CaOH and CaO look like cow. Hydride is simply an H or an H minus. Amide we use as the AM. And then KOH we just reorganize, we rewrite this as OHK, which is an acceptable way of writing a salt like this. And so if you just remember the sentence, now, now, cow, cow, ham, okay, then you might sound a bit silly when you're talking to classmates, but you will not look silly because you will remember all of the strong bases that you can assume complete dissociation of, and you can assume that these pick up as many protons as you put in particles. And so for every one of these molecules that you put in, that will pick up one proton, and it makes it very easy to do acid-base calculations because you can assume complete pickup of protons whenever these are released into an aqueous environment.